Birds aren't the only animals that build nests. Some animal nests are so unbelievable they rival human levels of engineering prowess. Here are 15 incredible animal nests. Number 15. Cathedral Termites Cathedral termites are a grass-eating species of harvester termite that are native to the Northern Territory of Australia. Once you see their nests, it becomes clear why they've been given their name. They build absolutely enormous mounds that will often reach to up to 15 or 20 feet in height, and they're so fast at constructing them that some have been seen increasing by 3 feet a week. Made from a mixture of feces, mud, and wood, they are waterproof and robust enough to withstand the most stresses that they're subjected to. But what's most surprising about these structures is that the termites don't actually live inside them. The actual nest is underground beneath these tall spires, but with so many individuals required for a large colony, there's a limit to how big it can get before there isn't an adequate supply of oxygen. These mounds function as an air conditioning system which channels fresh air into their tunnels and allows their numbers to drastically increase. Number 14. Pufferfish in the 1990s, a team of divers who were in the water off the coast of Amamioshima in Japan notices some mysterious six and a half foot wide circular structures in the sand on the seabed. But amazingly, it would be another 20 years until anyone figured out what had created them. The answer, it turned out, was that they are pufferfish nests that take the males about 10 days to construct with an unbelievable amount of precision before showing them off to the females in hopes that they'll be chosen to mate with. The fish, which are no more than five inches long, swims back and forth from the edge to the center to create the ridges in the sand, and then collects shells and stones to place along the perimeter. Quite what the females look for in a nest is still not known, however, but it's certainly one of the most elaborate nest designs and peculiar courtship rituals that's seen anywhere in the world. Number 13. European Bee Eater European bee eaters are migratory birds that breed in southern Europe and northern Africa. And because they like to feed on insects like bees, hornets, and dragonflies, they need to nest near to water sources. They don't, however, build nests like most other birds. Instead, dig long tunnels into the sandy banks. When large numbers of birds are present in the same place, this leads to the strange sight of a cliff face covered in hundreds of holes, each of which is home to a breeding pair. The 12-inch long birds squeeze into the tight space and lay five to eight eggs at a time. And it works perfectly because apart from other birds like themselves, hardly any other animals are able to reach the nests, which means the eggs are left as safe as they can be while both parents go out to hunt. Number 12. Vogelkop Bowerbird Vogelkop Bowerbirds are a species that's native to the Bird's Head Peninsula in western New Guinea, Indonesia. And because it's a place with very few natural predators, they can build their nests in a place that would seem crazy to birds elsewhere in the world, on the ground. These structures are built by the males and are impressive for both the design and the scale. Reaching a height of up to three or four feet and five or six feet in diameter, they look like huts made from plant material. And they even install two sticks to hold open an entrance. They're also one of the only species of bird to build a front yard which covers an area of 10 to 20 square feet and has all debris removed from it before being covered in a layer of moss and decorative ornaments like colorful flowers and the husks of shiny beetles. The males go to great lengths to build these to attract females, but once they're finished, the work isn't over. They also maintain them to an impeccable standard and will replace anything that looks out of place, even stealing from their neighbors to make sure theirs is the best bachelor pad in town. Number 11. Sociable Weaver Bird Normally, breeding pairs of birds will build a nest of their own, but sociable weaver birds of Southern Africa do things a little differently. They build their nests on trees or other tall objects like telegraph poles, and theirs are the largest of any species of bird, which is a good job because often they are home to as many as a hundred pairs. The species have learned that by working together they can construct something that's far safer and much more luxurious than would be possible otherwise, and is also a biological prerogative for the best genetic material to pass on to the next generation. So occasionally individuals will forego their ability to mate in place of their neighbor. Inside the structures are separate chambers for each pair that live there, and they are accessed by entrances that lead to the base of the nest. The mound also becomes used by a member of other birds, such as owls that may build their own nests on top, or ashy tits that use them to roost. They're an incredible sight to see, but also can be problematic. Ones built on power lines can often cause blackouts during the rainy season, 
and when they've dried out in the summer, they're prone to catching on fire. Number 10, diving bell spider. Diving bell spiders, which are found across Europe and Asia, are the only species of spider that we know of to live the vast majority of their lives underwater. This doesn't mean they're able to breathe oxygen from the water like fish do, however, and instead they rely on a clever system whereby they capture oxygen bubbles under the hairs on their body and are able to swim down with them to create a nest, usually beneath plant matter where they've built a web to hold it in place. They begin by catching some prey, tying it in place, and then bringing successive bubbles down to build a nest around it. Once completed, it essentially allows them to eat like on dry land beneath the surface of the water and can sustain them for a long time before they need to return to collect more. When they have a reliable nest, they dangle small strands of web from it into the water, which the spider uses to sense if any other potential food passes by. If it does, they lurch out to grab it, pull it back into the bubble, and then can begin to devour it. Number 9. Meadow Spittlebug Meadow spittlebugs are a species of insect that's found across Europe, North Africa, Russia, Japan, and the Americas. But with a maximum length of just a third of an inch, they're not so easy to spot in the undergrowth. They're good at running and flying, but are particularly powerful jumpers to escape predators, and have developed an ingenious way to protect their larvae until they're fully grown. They produce a large amount of spittle and foam, which, when they're present in large enough numbers, can appear to be dripping off branches and leaves like it's been raining. They're able to arrange it, however, to cocoon their newborns, which both protects them and provides them with all the moisture that they need. The larvae will stay there for at least 50 days until they reach adulthood, and once the nest is completely dry, they'll begin to emerge and look for mates of their own. Before we move on, be sure to subscribe to Top 5s with notifications on. Number 8. Ruby-Throated Hummingbird Ruby-throated hummingbirds, so named because of their red coloration on the lower part of their heads, are native to Central and Northern America. They usually breed across the eastern U.S., however, and begin by finding a protected location within a shrub or tree that's between 10 and 40 feet above the ground. They then start collecting the material needed to build the nest, which is designed to fit snugly around the female and her eggs. To do this, they use a mixture of spider silk and plant material, which also makes it stretchy so it can expand as the chicks hatch and start to grow. The process of construction takes around 10 days, and once the main shape is complete, they are then decorated with lichen and other plant material to ensure it camouflages in with the surroundings. Two weeks after the eggs are laid, the chicks will hatch, and they have enough room to stretch and buzz their wings while fully remaining within the nest. Just a few weeks later, they're ready to leave, and the mother will abandon the nest to move on somewhere else and start the process all over again, potentially raising three broods each year. Number 7. Australian Weaver Ants Weaver ants, which are also known as green ants, are native to forest regions of South Asia and Australia. And rather than building large nests on the ground, they use a technique that sees them construct habitats high up in the trees. The basic idea is that they find a collection of strong leaves and tie them together to build the nest. The process begins by the arrival of a scouting party that surveys the area for the sturdiest looking spot and start tugging on potential candidates. Once one has managed to bend a leaf over with its mandibles, others will join in and help, and if the space between the two leaves is more than the length of one ant, they'll make a chain of bodies until they can reach it so they can pull the sides together. Other ants will bring larvae in from an existing nest and tap it on the edges of the leaves where it secretes a silk that's used to bind them. The structures can cover huge areas and are usually completed in less than 24 hours. Even though they provide a great degree of protection for the colony, new ones are continually being built because there's always the risk that one of the others will be destroyed due to a storm or other unpredictable event. Number 6. Paper Wasps There are more than 300 species of paper wasp around the world, 22 of which are known to live in North America, and they're one of the most common insects that pest control are called out to help remove. One of the reasons for this is how quickly they're able to build their nests, and if the conditions are right, these structures can become enormous. Unlike other bees or wasps, paper wasps usually build their nests with open combs and stalk that anchors the entire structure. They collect fibers from wood and plants which they mix with their own saliva to create paper, which is then used as the construction material. Once the build is complete, the queen will lay an egg in each one of the hexagonal cells, and a few days later a larva will be born. They're fed, chewed up insects to provide them with the nutrients they need to become adults, and once they're ready for their transformation, they spin a silk cap over the end of their chamber. 
A week and a half later, when the wasp is ready to emerge, they cut a hole in the silk and are ready to help start the process all over again. Number 5. Montezuma Oropendola Found across the regions in Central America, the Montezuma oropendola is a colorful species of bird that's one of the most sexually dimorphic in the world, where the males are at least twice the size of the females. This is believed to be because the differences in the way that each forages for food, and that it's the responsibility of the males to protect the brood while the female is tending to the young. The nests where they lay their eggs are undoubtedly one of the more unusual designs you'll ever see. They're hanging sacks that are intricately woven from plant and wood fibers and drop about three feet from the branch that they're attached to. Inside, they're lined with soft material like leaves and flowers, which makes for the perfect environment for the eggs to hatch. Location is crucial too, and the females prefer to build these nests on trees that are some distance from other trees. They'll also build them close to a wasp nest if possible, because this will deter any predators or insects from trying to get to the eggs. The social hierarchy of Montezuma oropendola is also interesting because although multiple pairs will build their nests in close proximity to one another, males will continue to fight for dominance. Once an alpha has established itself, the others will stay far away while it's guarding all of the nests. But when it goes out to forage for food, the others will return to oversee things before fleeing again when he returns. Number 4. Baya Weaver if you ever visit the grasslands or cultivated areas of the Indian subcontinent, the chances are you'll see a large flock of baya weavers. The males have a striking yellow coloration over their heads and bellies, but there's something quite unusual about this species, the way they build their nests. They breed during the monsoon season, so it's vital that their nests are tough enough to endure the storms. Built solely by the males, they weave from strips of leaves, grasses, and palms and hang from tree branches, usually over water. As a social species, multiple nests will be built near one another, and each has a central nesting chamber that is connected to a side entrance by a long vertical tube. It takes them almost three weeks to complete, with an estimated 500 trips on average, needed to collect all the necessary materials. Amazingly, if they're built before the rain starts, they tend to be put on the eastern side of the tree to protect from all the storms as much as possible. But those who breed late in the season will choose a more central location in the tree's canopy. Number three. Hammercop. Hammercop are wading birds that are found in the wetlands of Africa and Madagascar, and despite growing to just 22 inches tall, they make extraordinarily large nests, sometimes up to 5 feet across, and even capable of supporting the weight of a person. If possible, they construct them in the fork of a tree, which provides the support needed, and the first step involves building a platform of sticks, walls, and a dome-shaped roof. This is all held together by mud, and they continue to add layer upon layer until it's sturdy enough. Researchers have suggested they need around 8,000 sticks or grass clumps to build one of these nests, in a process that can take several months. And this result is a thick-walled structure around a central nesting space with room for the parents and the young, and is connected to the outside by a 24-inch long tunnel to the mud-covered entrance at the bottom. Construction is done by both the female and the male, and it's thought that this degree of cooperation is part of the bonding process for the species, and why they often stick with the same mate over multiple seasons. Number 2. White Nest Swiftlet White Nest Swiftlets are responsible for building one of the most famous types of nest in the world, but the process by which they make them is arguably the most bizarre and disgusting of all, and the human uses for them are equally as surprising. They're native to Southeast Asia, where they hunt small flying insects around coastal and mountainous regions. They built their nests inside caves where they take advantage of nooks and crannies in the wall, and use their own saliva in the construction. By using this thick liquid that's soon solidified, they're able to effectively attach it to whatever the shape of the surface they're using is, and can carve the nest into the dimensions they need. Two layers of saliva are used, and when it's hardened, the nest is white, but partly translucent. At two and a half inches across and a half inch thick, it's perfect for looking after two eggs, but they've also been found to be perfect for something else too. The swiftlet's mating habits are often interrupted by people who scour the caves for the nests, which command a surprisingly huge price. The reason for this is that they're the main ingredient for bird's nest soup, which is believed to offer medicinal benefits as well as being an aphrodisiac. Nest theft has led to colonies in some regions being pushed close to extinction but now a number of commercial farms have been set up to cultivate the nests, while population numbers have begun to recover. Number 1. Malay Fowl 
The Mallee fowl are chicken-sized ground-dwelling birds that are native to Australia and are responsible for constructing some of the most unusual nests in the world. The males begin by choosing an open space, often between Mallee trees, and start to dig a hole that's around 10 feet across and 3 feet deep. The next step is to fill this depression with plant matter like sticks and leaves, as well as some sand, until it is raised about 2 feet above ground level. This becomes a compost site, and after it rains, the bird will churn it up to encourage decomposition. A chamber is dug into the top of this where the female will lay her eggs, and then the whole thing is covered in an insulation layer of sand. The idea behind this is to maintain a regular temperature without needing to sit on the eggs, and by continually monitoring it and opening or closing air vents, the eggs are kept at a constant 91.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Subscribe to Top 5s for more and check out some of our other popular videos.